eve of the departure of uh, honorable prime minister to japan papua new guinea and australia for a series of bilateral and multilateral engagements to give us a sense of what lies ahead we have the privilege of having with us foreign secretary sir shivani kwat also joining us on the dais uh, shisarup kumar uh, secretary east as well as shida damoravi secretary er sir Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon to all of you for presence here this afternoon for this special briefing on honorable prime minister's upcoming visit to Japan, Papua New Guinea and Australia. At the invitation of the Japanese prime minister Prime Minister Kishida, uh, honorable prime minister will be traveling to Hiroshima, Japan tomorrow morning, 19th of May. to participate in the G7 summit where india has been invited as a guest country this would be uh, the first leg of prime minister's three country visit uh, the G7 summit itself this time around has chosen several key priorities for the current presidency uh, the broad terms of uh, the G7 summit preferences in particular regarding their outreach with the invited guest countries is one on nuclear disarmament two on economic resilience and economic security <clears throat> three regional issues four climate and energy five food and health and development there are other priorities also such as digitization and science and technology which would get highlighted in the in various sessions during the G7 summit india's participation at the G7 summit in tokyo would be structured around three formal sessions uh two of them would be held on 20th of may and the third one on the 21st the two structural sessions on the 20th are first one that relates to food health development and gender equality the second session is on climate energy and environment and the third session on 21st of may is titled towards peaceful stable and prosperous world india's regular participation at the g7 summits clearly points to increasing recognition that india should be a part of any serious effort to resolve global challenges including those of peace security development and environment preservation this is even more salient in the context of our ongoing presidency of the g20 and our particular efforts to prioritize the interest and concerns of our fellow country members of the global south uh ahead of prime minister's participation in the G7 summit india has also participated in several ministerial level meetings of the G7 including in particular of the one relating to climate energy and environment two relating to digital and technology and third relating to health and finance on the sidelines of the G7 summit besides his interaction with the G7 countries and other guest countries in the three structural sessions that i mentioned the prime minister will also hold bilateral discussions with several leaders of the G7 as also with the guest countries and the international organizations just to mention that besides india japan as the g7 presidency has also invited australia brazil comoros cook islands indonesia republic of korea and vietnam and some of the international organizations including the united nations honorable prime minister will also hold bilateral meeting with the prime minister of japan this is still being scheduled so we will give you more details of this as we go along he is also scheduled 
to unveil a bust of Mahatma Gandhi in Hiroshima. As you are all aware, the two prime ministers last met during the Japan-India summit held in New Delhi earlier in March this year. We are also planning a Quad leaders meeting in Hiroshima with Prime Minister Kishida, President of the US, Prime Minister of Australia, and of course, our Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi. After Japan, for the second leg of his three-country visit, Honorable Prime Minister will visit Papua New Guinea, which will include, one, the organization uh, and the co-chairing of the third forum for India-Pacific Island Cooperation, FIPIC Summit, on 22 May, and also some of the bilateral meetings. Prime Minister would be reaching Port Moresby from Hiroshima in the evening of 21st of May, and will begin his bilateral engagements the next day with a call on the Governor General of Papua New Guinea, which will be followed by a meeting with the Prime Minister of PNG, Honorable James Marape. Uh, this will be Honorable Prime Minister's first visit to that country. During his stay in Port Moresby, Prime Minister will also be holding bilateral engagement with the Prime Minister of Fiji, uh, Honorable uh, Shidi Rabuka. This would be their first interaction after Mr. Rabuka came to power in December 2022. As you are all aware, a major highlight of Prime Minister's visit to Papua New Guinea is the third summit of the Forum for Indo-Pacific Island Cooperation, FIPIC, as I just mentioned earlier, which will be jointly hosted with the PNG's Prime Minister, James Marape. Honorable Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi, just to recall, launched this forum during his historic visit to Fiji in November 2014 when he hosted the first FIPIC summit. The second FIPIC summit was held in Jaipur in August 2015, and both the summits have thus far seen participation of all 14 FIPIC countries. Uh, just to list out the 14 uh, PIC countries, these include Cook Islands, Fiji, Republic of Kiribati, Republic of Marshall Islands, Federated States of Micronesia, Niue, Republic of Nauru, Republic of Palau, Papua New Guinea, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Tongo, Tuvalu, and Vanuatu. Prime Minister will also be meeting the Prime Minister of New Zealand um, uh, during his stay in Papua New Guinea. This would also be Prime Minister's first interaction with the Prime Minister of New Zealand who was sewn in as Prime Minister earlier in January this year. <clears throat> For the last leg of his three-country visit, uh, at the invitation of Prime Minister of Australia, uh, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese, Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi will travel to Sydney on 22 through 24 of May. Prime Minister Modi is scheduled to have a bilateral meeting with Prime Minister Albanese in Sydney this will be their fifth meeting within this year. The first was held exactly uh, a year back on the same date in Tokyo on the sidelines of Quad Leader Summit. Prime Minister is also expected to call on the Governor General, Honorable David Hurtley. Also planned during the visit is a business event where Prime Minister would be meeting the leading CEOs from Australia. Prime Minister will also be addressing the diaspora at a community event in Sydney on 23rd of May. We are expecting Honourable Prime Minister Shri Albanese to also expect it to join Prime Minister Modi at this community event. The visit of Honourable Prime Minister to Australia comes, as you all know, within just two months of the state visit of Prime Minister Albanese to India in March this year. The first India-Australia annual summit was held during the visit in Delhi on 10th of March, and Prime Minister Modi's last visit to Australia was in November 2014. 
we expect and it's also our objective that the visit to australia will reinforce the strong priority attached by india and australia to our bilateral relationship i would like to end here and if there are any questions would be very happy to take them thank you very much thank you sir uh, for the ground rules please introduce yourself and the organization that you represent i'll open the floor yes please go ahead फिदून सर सर मैं कविता जोशी हूँ हरिभूमि न्यूज़पेपर से सर मेरा सवाल ये है कि जो अभी आपने कहा कि हिरोशिमा में कॉर्ड लीडर्स समिट होगा तो ये माना जाए कि अब सिटी में जो कॉर्ड की मीटिंग होने वाली थी वो कैंसिल हो गई थी उसकी जगह बदल के अब हिरोशिमा हो गई है और सर इसमें जो बायोलेट्रल मीटिंग्स हैं पी की जी की साइड में जो होने वाली हैं उसमें से आपने जैपनीज़ प्राइम मिनिस्टर का तो बताया है लेकिन उसके अलावा किन कंट्रीज़ के नेशन हेड्स के साथ प्राइम मिनिस्टर की बायोलेट्रल मीटिंग्स होंगी उनके बारे में बताइए जापान के अलावा या बिहाइंड यू सर श्रीधर हियर फ्रॉम द एशियन एज सम बोट रिलेटेड टू द प्रीवियस क्वेश्चन व्हाट आर व्हाट आर द आई मीन हाउ डिफरेंट विल दिस हिरोशिमा क्वार्ट मीटिंग बी फ्रॉम अ रेगुलर क्वार्ट समिट एट सिडनी हाउ इज इट हाउ आर द टू डिस्टिंग्विश्ड थैंक यू प्लीज सो दिस राघवेंद्र द्रवाना फ्रॉम जर्मन टेलीविजन जेडीएल Um, so the question from the editor, uh, sir, in the Western countries, uh, they're concerned about India's being abstaining uh, from the resolution criticizing uh, Russia and uh, discussing the Ukraine war. So the question: What is India willing to do to end the war in Russia and Ukraine? So the question was the last part. The first one is just a comment. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, who had a hand up? Yeah, yes, she got. Uh, this is Yeshi Seri from the New Indian Express. Uh, so, uh, during uh, Prime Minister Modi's uh, visit to Australia, what are the chances of, uh, uh, you know, uh, upgrading the existing uh, trade agreement to a comprehensive economic partnership agreement with uh, with Australia during his visit to Sydney? Upgrading the trade yes. to a SECA. Yes. Okay. Hey, Kar Sir. Oh, last one meeting. Sir, Sri Joy, Times Now. Sir, you began your uh, statement with a reference to nuclear disarmament. The PM is visiting, importantly enough, considering what happened in 1945, Hiroshima. Now, there have been recent reports and important meetings, even within the government, about. since you mentioned uh, disarmament nuclear disarmament about the increasing number of nuclear warheads that are being built by the people's republic of china from their current figure of 380 to a larger figure they are also modernizing there are some reports unconfirmed that they may even change their nuclear use policy that's not confirmed but the modernization and the increase in the number is is well known and it's a uh, issue of concern clearly here is this something that will be shared with other countries in an, a place like hiroshima of all places um i'm sorry i don't think i'm going to allow that question i see very limited link with that i understand it's a security and but this is not a nuclear security disarmament conference rest of it sir i'll pass it on to you थैंक यू कविता जी जैसे आपका जो पहला प्रश्न था क्वाड uh, की शिखर वार्ता जो सिडनी में निर्धारित uh, थी और जो जो जिन कारणों से और वो कारण आप सब लोगों को ज्ञात हैं कि वो नहीं हो रही और अब वो uh, ये प्रयास क्वाड uh, के चारों देश कर रहे हैं कि uh, हिरेशमा में चारों नेताओं की शीर्ष नेताओं की उपस्थिति का फ़ायदा उठाते हुए क्वाड की जो शिखर वार्ता है वो हिरोशिमा में की जाए देखिए क्वाड के जो सहयोग और सहकार्य और जो उनके सहयोग सहकार्य की प्रक्रियाएं हैं उनका उनकी संरचना इस प्रकार से है उनका स्वरूप इस प्रकार से है कि क्वाड की शिखर वार्ता जब हिरोशिमा में होगी तो जो एजेंडा पिछली क्वाड की शिखर वार्ताओं में 
नेताओं के बीच में जिसके प्रति सहमति बनी है उस सहमति के आधार पे क्वाड किस प्रकार से आगे सहयोग करे आगे सहकार्य करे विभिन्न क्षेत्रों में आर्थिक क्षेत्र हैं मेरी टाइम डोमेन अवेयरनेस के क्षेत्र हैं डेवलपमेंट कोऑपरेशन के क्षेत्र हैं इंडो पैसिफिक में किस प्रकार से क्वाड देश अपना सहयोग और आगे बढ़ाएं उससे संबंधित जो मुद्दे हैं वो सारे के सारे मुद्दे अब जो है हिरोशिमा में यदि इस क्वाड शिखर वार्ता का समय से आयोजन हो पाता है तो उसमें वो पूरी तरह से डिस्कस किए जाएंगे सिडनी में शिखर वार्ता का ना हो पाना और उसका अब हिरोशिमा में होना वो एक प्रकार से वेन्यू में तो चेंज है लेकिन जो सहयोग की जो मुख्य भूमिका है उसकी जो पृष्ठभूमि है उसके जो स्पेसिफिक एस्पेक्ट्स हैं उसमें किसी भी प्रकार का कोई भी परिवर्तन जो है वो नहीं आएगा जहाँ तक बायोलेट्रल द्विपक्षीय मीटिंग्स का प्रश्न है हिरोशिमा में जापान और कई अन्य देशों के साथ बायोलेट्रल मीटिंग्स अभी इस समय प्लानिंग की फेज में है अपेक्षित है अन्य नेताओं के साथ भी जैसे जैसे ये मीटिंग्स की संरचना और इनका टाइम स्लॉट स्पष्ट रूप से निर्धारित होता जाएगा हम आपको जो है उसकी विस्तृत जानकारी समय समय पे देते रहेंगे श्री दत्त जस्ट टू कंटिन्यू टू व्हाट आई सेड आई थिंक दी दी एलिमेंट्स ऑफ आर एंगेजमेंट अमंग द क्वाड कंट्रीज अक्रॉस वेरियस डोमेन्स दे वुड बी एब्सोल्युटली नो चेंज इन आर कलेक्टिव ऑब्जेक्टिव टू वन स्ट्रेंदन दैम to build further layers of uh, partnership and cooperation on them uh, when the four leaders meet in hiroshima uh, uh, they would naturally uh, uh, take a very good stock good assessment of what has been the current status of engagement among the quad countries and then also uh, build further on that uh, uh, a lot of preparation has gone on uh, for this quad meeting Uh, there are uh, several deliverables which we are expecting to come out of it and i think all that would be showcased when the four leaders meet in hiroshima uh, 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 sorry, sorry you, you're not you're not audible without the mic i don't think if i have a supplementary we'll come back to it uh, on the question uh, from you with regard to uh, uh, look our position on russia ukraine conflict uh, uh, has been uh, you know spoken reiterated n number of times uh, both in our press briefings here and also outside this forum uh, <clears throat> our prime minister has also spoken about what he himself uh, believes uh, should be the path forward uh, for the resolution of this conflict uh, you would have all heard when uh, during his meeting uh, with the uh, with the russian president in in samarkand he clearly said that uh, this is not a need of war and uh, uh, as this is not the era of war the resolution of this conflict has to be through dialogue on diplomacy that is the fundamental uh, anchor on which uh, uh, our political positioning and the pursuit of our economic interest and other interest is based in so far as this conflict is concerned this has as i said has been uh, uh, enunciated uh, and repeated uh, several times um, with regard to the question on uh, upgradation of the current uh, framework agreement that we have with australia into the next one look the discussions on uh, broad basing uh, uh, trade investment and other elements of economic partnership between india and australia is an ongoing discussion uh, naturally end objective is that we try to uh, upscale and upgrade our uh, current framework of partnership uh, into uh, comprehensive economic cooperation agreement but those conversations are still going on at this stage i don't think it would be correct for me to conclusively say whether 
we would be able to uh, achieve that objective uh, prior to this visit. Uh, but it is something which is very substantive and a lot of work needs to go into it before you conclude it. Uh, one second. You had a clarification question before that, yeah. So just a small clarification. Uh, so this is a regular quad summit in Hiroshima. Am I right in uh, understanding that? This is not just a uh, meeting or an informal. This is a regular quad summit in Hiroshima. The venue has changed from Sydney. Am I right in saying that? When the four quad leaders meet, it is a quad summit. OK. Uh, Madhurendra. Sir, I'm Madhurendra from my news, Nisan Sir. My question is that PM Modi and PM Kasira have been talking about the project. Will you discuss the bullet train project? Because there are many questions about the deadline and the finance. Both sides have been reported from time to time. And the other question is, what will the PM Modi go to the Gurdwari? And what will the PM Modi go to the Gurdwari? And what will the PM Modi go to the Gurdwari? And what will the PM Modi go to the Gurdwari? And what will the PM Modi go to the Gurdwari? And what will the radical elements go to the Gurdwari? Smita. Smita Sharma here. Smita Sharma here. Has there been any discussion on a formal expansion of the G7, perhaps including a membership for India too? And uh, there is supposed to be an event where leaders, including the Prime Minister, will meet with the families of the atomic bombings victims. Uh, do you think in that context, India's status as a non-NPT signatory could also come up for discussions? Talk it. Ah, Taukir from Yamuri Shamban. There is one of the programs in G7 Yamuri where Shambhan. the invited leaders... Sorry, which? Visit. Sorry, which? which? Taukir from the Yamuri Shamban, Japan. So there is one of the programs in G7 where the invited leaders are going to visit the Peace, Peace Museum. So I just want to understand that what, uh, what is the significance of it in India, for India, and as, as Samita mentioned about our nuclear policy. Hi, sir. It's an unrelated question, uh, but... Hi, Akshay Dungri from India Today. Yeah. Uh, sir, a bit unrelated question, but uh, this question is on uh, baby Ariha. It's been 20 months uh, since... Uh, it is unrelated. Can we move on to something else? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. This is Manas from PTI Press Trust of India. I just wanted to ask you, uh, India is uh, uh, holding the presidency of G20 and uh, Prime Minister Modi is going for G7 summit. And there have been so many areas of convergence. So is India going to just seek convergence between the two groupings in dealing with pressing challenges like food, energy, security, etc.? Thank you. And we had uh, one question there. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Hello, sir. I'm Sadam from CNN News 18. So my question is with regards to US annual religious freedom report. And why I'm asking this question is because uh, there is a possibility that Prime Minister will hold bilateral with uh, President Biden on the sidelines of G7 in Japan. So will this issue be raised? Because with each passing year, this report comes up and India condemns it. India calls it pious. So is this going to be any end of um, I didn't get your question. Who will raise it? The Prime Minister, the Indian side. Will we should raise yeah. their report. The report, because each year we condemn it. Oh, we my institute, we've said what we have to say, but I will leave if Arunzai wants to add anything. Uh, we'll, uh, we've taken five, qu one more question. Who was here? Yeah. No, before. Yeah. Uh, Shama, to be the uh, so the G7, of course, is also expected to talk about debt relief. It's also expected to talk about food security. These are, of course, priorities that India has also pushed through its presidency of the G20. Are you optimistic about certain specific deliverables in terms of policies? Uh, for, for example, swaps, relief, debt relief for developing countries? Is that a major economic priority right now? Uh, this is from, I'm, I'm not clear, is this from the G7 or G7. the G7 partners uh, meeting? Yes, but when, during the meeting, is India likely to push that and table debt relief and specific Debt power? relief and all, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. I, just get to that. I think I'll just uh, pick up the last one first. Uh, you see, there are, uh, the way the G7 summits are organized, there are two parts to it. The first part is discussions among the G7 countries. Uh, the agenda for those discussions does not include the guest country participation. The second part of it is where G7 countries interface with the invited guest countries on a set of 
global priorities which are naturally of uh, interest uh, uh, to the world in general but uh, also in particular to the developing countries uh, uh, along with prime minister i mentioned to you the other countries which have been invited in this outreach uh, of g7 uh, summit members with the invited countries the discussion will revolve around three sessions which i mentioned to you and if you look at the uh, areas of focus which i mentioned they include food security health security development cooperation gender equality climate energy and environment uh, and uh, the stability and prosperity of world in general all these are essentially areas which are very crucial not just for global growth but also particularly for the developing world uh, what specific deliverables come out of these discussions between the g summit members and the invited countries uh, i think once those sessions are over we will be sharing them with you uh, many of them are still under discussions uh, and over the next 48 to 72 hours they will take a, a concrete shape and in that sense we will be able to then share them with you देखिए जापान के प्रधानमंत्री जी के साथ किन किन मुद्दों पे बातचीत होगी वो तो इस समय मेरा कहना उचित नहीं होगा लेकिन ये ये अपेक्षित है कि जब दोनों नेता मिलेंगे तो आर्थिक सहयोग के सभी विषयों पे और जो हमारे सामरिक सहयोग और सहकार्य के क्षेत्र हैं उन सभी विषयों पे भी दोनों नेतागण अवश्य चर्चा करेंगे मगर जैसे कि मैंने कहा कि द्विपक्षीय वार्ताएं अभी जापान और बाकी देशों के साथ अभी उनकी शेड्यूलिंग चल रही है और जब एक बार उनका स्पष्टीकरण हो जाता है तो उसके बाद वो जानकारी हम आपके साथ शेयर कर सकेंगे ऑस्ट्रेलिया की यात्रा के दौरान भी ये हम अपेक्षा कर सकते हैं कि जब दोनों नेता आपस में वार्ता करेंगे तो द्विपक्षीय सहयोग के सभी मुद्दों पे विस्तार से बातचीत की जाएगी ये स्वाभाविक है कि सहयोग के क्षेत्रों में वो क्षेत्र भी शामिल हैं जो कि दोनों समाजों की सुरक्षा के हितों से जुड़े हुए हैं और उन मुद्दों पर अवश्य ही जो है बातचीत होगी खालिस्तान का जहाँ तक मुद्दा है उस मुद्दे की सहनशीलता उसकी संवेदनशीलता को लेते हुए हमने ये मुद्दा कई बार ऑस्ट्रेलिया के समक्ष रखा है और इस विषय पे हमारी और ऑस्ट्रेलिया के बीच में वार्ता लगातार जो है जारी रहती है देखिए जो I think there was a question with regard to the uh, meeting between the uh, between the leaders participating there, and uh, uh, and a meeting with uh, with the family members, or the visit to different uh, 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 different memorials or monuments in Hiroshima. Uh, there are several uh, parts of uh, uh, our own Prime Minister's program in Hiroshima. as also with the uh, with the uh, uh, of the g7 leaders which are still developing which still have to take shape and as i said once uh, those program elements are finalized and uh, those activities do take place uh, we would be very happy to share with you uh, not just the uh, significance of that particular thing uh, that finalized but also the context in which uh, those elements of the visit Uh, and uh, uh, events and activities in hiroshima have been finalized so that is i think in the post uh, with 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 if you are a mic you will not come with whom could that be you know a subject of discussion given the focus on nuclear disarmament india is not not a signatory to the nuclear non proliferation treaty yeah so will that be a subject of discussion uh, and Any the formal uh, expansion of the G7 membership no. is that something? Uh, look, the uh, India is not a G7 member, so 
it would be very incorrect for a non G7 member to even talk about G7 member expansion. I think that is something which the uh, that's that's a question which uh, probably needs to be addressed to the to the to the G7 itself. Mm -hmm. uh, as I I have already uh, highlighted to you in my remarks the uh, the sessions the structural subjects which are going to be the focus of discussions between the G7 summit leaders and the invited countries. Uh, and I just answered a little while earlier with regard to this would be focused on food security, health security, development cooperation, climate, energy, environment, and peaceful, stable, and prosperous world. Now, naturally, the visit is set in, in, in Hiroshima, which has a certain context. And I think uh, uh, the world is uh, fully aware of uh, what our positions have been on the global uh, nuclear disarmament. And I think those positions have been articulated uh, uh, several times. And uh, there is absolutely nobody is in any doubt in terms of where India stands when it comes to the peace and stability and the nuclear disarmament uh, in the rest of the world. But specific elements of the program which you mentioned, uh, both the Peace Museum, meeting with the families, I think those are something which, as in what they get uh, finalized, we'll be very happy to share them with you. Uh, take a last quick few. Uh, we know we're really out of time. Um, who had a question? Yeah, go ahead. Just one second. No, hold. Sorry, I missed you. Sir, uh, Rishikesh from PTI. Uh, so, uh, to what extent uh, is the topic of counterterrorism uh, expected to be discussed during the bilateral of, uh, of uh, PM Modi with uh, Biden? And uh, will India request pre uh, President Biden's assistance in expediting the extradition of uh, Tahabur Rana, the Pakistan origin terrorist? Yeah. There at the back. So I'm Abhishek Kapoor from Republic TV. Uh, there have been some specific and open threats uh, by some Khalistani elements to disrupt Prime Minister's Sydney events. Uh, uh, has it been taken up uh, insofar as providing additional layer of security is concerned? Yes, right, sir. And second, if you could yes, take this question. Stick to question. Quick, fast. If you yeah, fast. Really uh, just how, about half an hour back, we reported about... Uh, about half an hour back, we reported of uh, Indian naval assets assisting... Uh, Chinese uh, People Liberation Army Navy in uh, search no, and rescue operations. Sorry, in the not Indian relevant. Region. I'm happy to discuss Please separately. Interest. No, sorry, not relevant. Please, Huma. I'm Huma Siddiqui from the Financial Express. Just wanted to know what would be the focus of the third forum meeting in uh, Papua New Guinea, and uh, the there's al also news that there's several agreements which are going to be in during that visit. So can you just uh, talk about that, please? Okay, and a final question. So, yeah, Akhilesh. Akhilesh. Uh, sir, I'm Akhilesh Sumar from Samsung TV. Uh, we had organized a meeting of Global South, and when Prime Minister Narendra Modi is going to participate the outreach of uh, G7, what is the message that we want to communicate the members of G7 at this moment? So someone, you had a question? Um, something very different? Yeah. Uh, sir, I'm Suman Sharma. Uh, so you mentioned the last EPIC summit uh, was held in Jaipur in 2015. So and uh, it's happening now. So uh, why did it take so long? Why didn't it happen in these years? Thank you. Thank you, uh, sir. I will hand over this question. I think uh, we'll just, uh, if, if you all allow, I think uh, Huma Siddiqui ji's question on the on the uh, third FIPIC summit and what the priorities are. I would request my colleague, uh, Secretary East, Mr. Saurabh Kumar, to first answer that, please. Yeah. Uh, so let me, let me take your question uh, first. Uh, uh, the thrust of our cooperation with uh, the Pacific Island countries has been uh, to a very large extent around the areas which are of importance to these countries. And these include uh, things like sustainable uh, development, sustainability, uh, quick impact uh, projects, 
uh, humanitarian assistance and uh, disaster uh, relief, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we have undertaken certain projects out there also, uh, including in the uh, area of uh, IT sector. Uh, uh, we have an MOU in the area of sustainability, uh, you know, which was an announcement which was made last time and uh, subsequently it was uh, signed. Uh, what the exact outcomes of uh, this particular summit would be, we would have to wait and see uh, what uh, outcomes are uh, there. I think as far as your question, Madam, is concerned about uh, uh, why there was a, a delay, uh, we had, the, the forum summit had been uh, uh, scheduled some time ago uh, for 2020, but because of, uh, you know, uh, COVID and other scheduling difficulties, it could not be held at that point of time, and we are having it now. Thank you. I think the first question uh, was whether uh, the question of counterterrorism and uh, uh, speedy extradition of Tahubur Rana whether that would be taken up with President Biden, the discussions. I think that was your first question. Look, as I've already mentioned to you, the bilateral meetings on the sidelines of the G7 summit in Hiroshima are still being firmed up. So I am not going to make any assumptions about which meetings would happen, which meetings would not happen. Um, but whatever uh, bilateral meetings uh, that Prime Minister uh, holds on the sidelines of the G7 summit with whichever leader, uh, uh, the entire gamut of the bilateral relationship with that particular country would fall under the scope of discussions between the prime minister and that leader. But very specifically not connected to the question of uh, which bilateral meeting will take place or not, insofar as the question of Tahavur Rana is concerned, uh, we are in very regular touch um, uh, with the U.S. authorities uh, uh, to ensure that uh, there is speedy and early extradition of Tahvarana. We have all seen the, uh, the judgment which was given uh, by, the, by the local uh, U.S. court there. That conversation of ours with the U.S. side is continuing. Uh, Akhilesh, your question on... Uh, Huh? Abhishek, sir. and this question on uh, uh, security, uh, uh, etc., for the visit of the uh, of the Prime Minister. Look, whenever uh, Honourable Prime Minister travels to any destination, uh, all elements uh, relating to logistical and security arrangements of his visit are duly taken care of. But uh, those are the questions that we don't comment on but uh, the relevant people are, uh, who, who are charged with that responsibility do take full care of that. On the question relating to what will be our message uh, from the Global South uh, to the G7 leader, uh, along with, of course, what are also the focus areas of India's G20 presidency. Uh, look, when we, uh, when we did the briefing on the Voice of Global South Summit here in this room. Uh, we, had, uh, uh, we had mentioned that uh, one very clear sense that came across uh, during the Voice of Global South Summit was uh, that the countries of the Global South clearly felt that their priorities of development, uh, debt-free development, are development which doesn't burden them with debt. Uh, the problems which they faced, particularly uh, during the pandemic and thereafter, of food security, health security, the way the societies of the global south suffer because of the challenges of climate change, uh, the way uh, they think the global south needs to be looked at when you look at liberalized global trade regime. Uh, it was a clear sense that came out of the meeting of the Voice of the Global South uh, that these priorities are not uh, adequately or deeply or properly addressed 
by the countries of the of the west uh, when uh, even in the past uh, meetings whenever honorable prime minister has spoken at such multilateral forum uh, he has always been uh, uh, in the forefront uh, championing uh, the cause and the priorities of the global south countries uh, and naturally that would also be uh, one of his priorities when he engages and interfaces with the leaders of the G7 summit during his visit to Hiroshima thank you very much sir my thanks also to other secretaries uh, particularly secretary is shorov kumar and secretary yar shidamuravi for joining us on this briefing thank you all for joining please stay tuned to our updates on our social media and otherwise on the forthcoming visit of prime minister to these three nations thank, thank you. you very much